Hey, welcome everyone to our service of evening prayer for Ascension Day. A uh, particular welcome to those uh, from outside our parishes because this is uh, a deanery service. Uh, so it's great to have people uh, uh, from different parishes around the deanery. Um, we'll be, the words will all be on the screen if you want to uh, join in with the bits in red. Uh, please do. Um, as we go through the service, uh, the, all the words will be on the screen, as I've said. Uh, do keep in mind uh, those uh, from around the deanery, particularly those in Curtin. This service was supposed to be happening in Greyingham. Uh, obviously, with COVID, we can't do that. Uh, but if we can keep Cathy uh, particularly in our prayers this evening, uh, as well and uh, the rest of the family so we'll just take a couple of moments quiet before we start the service oh god make speed to save us oh lord, oh lord. Oh lord. your throne has been established from of old Bless to you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the darkness of death, you have raised your Christ to the right hand of your Majesty on high. The pioneer of our faith, his passion accomplished, has opened for us the way to heaven and sends on us the promised spirit. May we be ready to follow the way, and so be brought to the glory of his presence, where songs of triumph forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We've come together as the family of God, in our Father's presence, to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word. To bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son Jesus Christ we may give ourselves to his service. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb, and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers, trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly loving rule. We hear again the story of his party. First we come to God in confession. We have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us draw near with a true heart, assurance of faith, and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. Pray right together. Almighty God. Almighty God. Our Amen. Heavenly Father. We have We are for the sake of your son, you died for us. Give us all the the glory of your Amen. 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 Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The song of Christ's appearing. I'm going to say the odd verses if you'd like to respond with the even verses. Christ Jesus was revealed in the flesh and vindicated in the spirit. 
Believed in throughout the world, he was taken up in glory. Who alone has immortality and dwells in inapproachable light. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray in one heart and mind. As our evening prayer. Rise before you, O you, O God. So may your mercy and mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and your praise and breathe to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to have uh, our first reading. Uh, if we can, Jane, if you could do our reading from Acts, please. The reading is from Acts chapter one. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jeff, a reading from Ephesians. Yes, this New Testament reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 15. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. 
and he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all, all things for the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all this is the word of the lord thanks be to god, god. Oh, god. Christ. May my spoken word be faithful to your written word and point ever and only to the eternal word, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, in our Church of England Bible readings for the year, which we call the lectionary, we've reached a turning point. As we approach Pentecost, we're moving from the gospel accounts of Jesus' death and resurrection, and we're beginning to read Acts the story of the early church. The book of Acts, of course, is actually the second part of one overall story. Luke's gospel records Jesus' earthly life and ministry. Acts is the story of Jesus' work continuing through his church, empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's interesting to note that the word comforter, which we can read in our Bibles, referring to the Holy Spirit, is actually derived from a Latin word fortis, that means brave. I think it speaks of the courage and devotion the Holy Spirit would bring the disciples, the transformation that we see in Peter as he proclaims the message of Jesus in Acts chapter 2. And we are part of this story, the story of the church of, that God calls and entrusts with carrying on the life and ministry of Christ in the world, in the power of that same Holy Spirit. I wonder, though, if we always realise that. Perhaps we can focus on the wrong things or look in the wrong places. We can read the story of Jesus told in Luke's Gospel, look at the bigger picture, and we can see that Jesus' ascension had to happen. He told his friends he was going back to his father and their father. He was returning to the glory that had been his since before the creation of the universe. Yet, where do we find the disciples looking in our short passage from Acts? We find them looking to where Jesus has just gone. He'd risen from the grave. He'd appeared to them. There'd be 40 days of him appearing and spending time with them. Now, often in scripture, the term 40 days is a shorthand for a long time. However long it was, it was long enough for the disciples to get used to having the risen Jesus among them, to rekindle their hope. But now he had really, really physically gone from among them. And I just wonder how they might have felt. The film Risen, that looks at the story of Jesus rising and ascending from the perspective of a skeptical Roman soldier, imagines this final scene of the ascension as Jesus giving his final instructions and guidance to his disciples and then walking away and disappearing. His disciples in the film, confronted by the reality of his finally leaving, call after him. The joy which accompanies them back to Jerusalem might not have come straight away. There was a pause while the disciples looked at the place where Jesus had just been. The angels remind the disciples that Jesus would return the way he had gone. But this was not the time to be standing around wondering when that might be. They had to get themselves back to Jerusalem and wait for the promised Holy Spirit. Soon enough, there would be work to be done in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and far, far beyond. And what about us? Where are we looking for Jesus? Where is our focus right now as God's people are we looking for Jesus behind the doors of our closed church buildings? Do we think Jesus is hiding in the minister's study? Has he taken a sabbatical until whenever, whatever the new normal is begins to take shape? Jesus said, 
I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Since the time of the Acts of the Apostles, how has he been doing just that? Isn't it through ordinary people like you and I, in all our brokenness, with all our flaws and faults, isn't it to God's glory that through the love of his son and the power of the Holy Spirit, he takes such as we and builds us, shapes us and molds us into Christ's body right here on earth. The same Holy Spirit, the same comforter Jesus promises his disciples is with us, is for us and prays through us. Yet just as the disciples had to wait in the upper room and hold on to the promises of Jesus, so perhaps do we right now. I never thought I would preach my first ever Ascension Day sermon for a deanery service online. I thought I would be in one of our church buildings all dressed up and trying not to sweat too much under the gaze of more senior and experienced clergy people and hoping that all those who came to the service might find something relevant in what I had to say. It's easy to feel very disoriented and disconnected, thrown, if you will, by our current situation. Yet we might be ch being challenged by God to trust in him and called afresh to love one another and to use the gifts he has given us to not only continue as worshipping communities, but to bear witness to the resurrection hope that we have. Are we being challenged to focus on what's really important? In our reading from Ephesians Paul the Apostle is writing to a church that is growing spiritually and in numbers. Paul gives thanks for the Ephesians' faith, their love for each other and for all of God's people. What will be said of God's church, his royal priesthood, his people at the end of this current crisis? Will our faithfulness, our discipleship, our love and our witness to Christian hope be remembered? Or will the, our focus be on what we couldn't have or couldn't do and on what we feel we were deprived of? Will we be angry about how different things have become and may still be? Will we look inward? Paul prays the most incredible prayer for the Ephesian church. And I think perhaps it would be a great prayer for us too. He prays for wisdom through the Holy Spirit and a continuous developing revelation of God as the Ephesians come to know God more and more. Nearer, my God, to thee, nearer to thee. If there were to be one good thing to come out of our pandemic experience, might it be that we have sought to become closer to God and asked him to come closer to us? Have we been able to see his hand in the renewing of creation in the spring colours and the songs of the birds? Have we listened with our hearts and souls to the word of God in the Bible? Have we allowed ourselves to be fed by God? Have we sat still enough for him to meet with us in the Holy Spirit? Paul reminds his readers of their inheritance, of all that is now theirs through Christ. Perhaps we need to be reminded, too, of all that we have in Christ that is eternal, that is not confined to this world, that will not decay or pass away. That is the treasure we have that we are called to share with others just as the first disciples were. And my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, it is down to us to share it. For we are the church and we are Christ's body here and now. This is the most incredible and tremendous thing that Paul expresses at the end of our Ephesians reading. God's plan for the world is in our hands. Really? What is God thinking of? Is he really counting on us, you and I, and all the other rather odd, broken and flawed people who normally turn up to church on a Sunday morning? Well, actually, yes, he is. Because as his beloved people, he seeks to work in us and through us to continue to witness to the kingdom of God, to be prepared for the things he has for us to do, to be Jesus' hands and feet 
in the place we find ourselves. Jesus has met us and continues to meet us where we are if we have eyes to see and if we can listen to his voice. But he cannot leave us as we are. He calls us to draw closer to him and through the Holy Spirit, we can be transformed into something more. We can be a blessing to each other, to our neighbors and our communities. At the moment, it's hard to see beyond the end of today or even tomorrow. But what type of church will we be on the other side of this pandemic? Will we come together again, having drawn closer to God and to each other? Will we be open to the vision God that may, ha may have for his people? Will we have a deeper trust in the one who overcame death and gives eternal hope? Will we be ready afresh to give an account of the hope we have in Jesus? Let's pray to our Heavenly Father that he helps us to look in the right direction and in the right places. May we hear God's voice. If he says to us, people of Yarborough, why are you looking for me over there? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> So the Te Deum, uh, again, I'll say the odd verses, if you can respond with the even verses. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All glory to you, O Lord, the Father, everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless prayer. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble worship of prophets praise you. The, the white of praise, praise you. Throughout the world, you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, you Christ, Christ are, are the, the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You, you overcame, overcame the sting of death, and the sting of death, and the king of heaven, and the You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come, come then, then Lord, Lord, and help, and help your people, your people bought, bought with the price of your own blood, blood and, and bring us in your saints into glory everlasting. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And, and grant, grant us, us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And, and teach her and her 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 Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. And, and let, let your servants be clothed with O Lord, make your ways known upon earth. Let, let all nations acknowledge your name. Give your people the blessing of peace. And, and let, let your, your, your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God. And, and renew the right, right spirit in us. Amen. Ruth's going to bring us our prayers. Mute, Luke, Ruth. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
You have exalted your son Christ Jesus to your right hand and made him the head over all things for his body, the church. Hear us as we pray for the church throughout the world. Make us and all your people receptive to the gifts he pours upon us, that we may use them to your glory and the building up of the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, the Ancient of Days, you have given your Son all authority in heaven and on earth. Hear us as we pray for the world he came to redeem. Grant that we may know even in this time the things that make for peace and may strive for the reconciliation of all people in his kingdom of justice and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all, whose Son has promised to be with us always to the end of the age, hear us as we pray for those among whom we live and work. Grant that we may be so aware of his presence with us that people may take note of us that we have been with Jesus. Open a door for our message of the mystery of Christ and may we proclaim it clearly and boldly. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our O God, our Redeemer, whose Son ever lives to make intercession for us, Hear us as we pray for those in any kind of need. May he who has borne our infirmity strengthen and heal them, that they may find grace to help in times of need and rejoice in his salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, whose Son has borne our humanity into the heavenly realms and gone before us to prepare a place for us. Hear us as we remember all those who mourn, especially those who have no faith in you to sustain them. Make us joyful and expectant that at his coming with all his own, we too may go forth to meet him and share in his eternal joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, that we in heart and mind may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. 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 God, the author of all holy desires, all purposes and all just works, to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that we, obeying your commands and being delivered from the fear of our enemies, may live in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. 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 By our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Mighty God, you've given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants, as may be most expedient for them. 
granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come everlasting life amen amen, amen. amen. looking for the coming of his kingdom as our saviour taught us so we pray our father, father, father who art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we give those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. 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 Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks. Thanks. Alleluia. 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 Well, thank you for joining us for our service. Um, it is going to be uploaded to YouTube uh, later on. Um, so you can watch it again, you can uh, share it with other people and also on there I'll put some uh, suggestions of uh, hymns, uh, some links to uh, hymns that would have been appropriate but obviously uh, we're not singing. Um, so uh, we're going to leave this open if you want to stay and chat. Alan's going to turn off the recording in a minute.